All right. So my presentation will be on bridging fine art and medicine. Okay. So if you're a physician, maybe we have some physicians in the room, you likely know what you're looking at right now. Not only would you recognize this is an MRI, but you'd notice that there's something off about it. You'd notice the small white spots that shouldn't be there. You'd probably know that you're looking at MS. And this is what my neurologist knew within seconds of looking at my MRIs. He barely looked at me. In fact, he had a hard time making eye contact with me when we first met. But he had the necessary skills to look at this MRI and interpret it immediately. MRIs in this sense are a marvel. They allow us to see inside the human body as never before. Physicians now have a kind of techno vision. They learn to see their patients through these kinds of representative images. They're diagnostically important, but relating this image to a patient can be difficult. MRIs break a patient apart to focus on the parts of her body that show disease. In my experience, these images are hard to relate to. They just don't look like me. <laughs> they pull me apart and show me in fragments, and I'm used to seeing myself as a whole body. Becoming ill in itself can be a fragmenting and isolating experience, and so you turn to your physicians to help you make sense of illness. And as a patient, you hand over a lot of interpretive power over your body to your physician. But there's so much that these images can't tell you. For example, they can't tell you how you will experience or live with illness. Now, these medical images are a far cry from the way in which anatomy was once depicted. If you look at older medical textbooks, like these pages from Vesalius, you'll notice that the bodies presented in them are really artistically rendered. This is because anatomists used to hire artists to help them draw bodies to help teach others what the body was made of. The artist's eye and the physician's eye came together to help create a depiction of the body. You were learning anatomy, but the bodies were also <coughs> placed into positions to reflect how people understood the context of the body, what the body was for, and who created the body. Taking a cue from these older depictions of bodies, I began to wonder, could contemporary medical images also say something more about the body? Where it is located and how it experiences the world? And I'm lucky enough to have a sister, Darian, who is a printmaker. And so I shared my MRIs with her. And using techniques that she developed, she placed these MRI scans back into a body and puts that body in various domestic spaces where I experience my day-to-day -day life living with chronic illness. These images retain the MRI, but focus on the patient who is experiencing and living with disease. These reimaginings can create a bridge between medical knowledge and the patient experience. Darian reads my narratives and recreates them in artistic form. Rather than wielding power over me, Darian and I share interpretive power over my body. In these images, I see myself put back together. The fullness of my image is given back to me. Together, we co-create a representation of my ill body that depicts what's, what it is like for me to live with illness. And then we thought, <coughs> If the artist and the bioethicist can come together in this act of co-creation, why not invite others in as well? And so for this book here, um, we invited a medical humanist, a visual culture theorist, a philosopher, and a theologian to read my narrative, to look at Darian's art, and then to add their own reflections from their own disciplines about the meaning of the body and the meaning of illness. By allowing scholars of other disciplines to reflect upon my story and this image, we allow others to share in the interpretive practice uh, that reimagines the body and illness. And the result, I think, is a fuller depiction of the body that adds to our cultural understanding of illness. Thank you.